No matter how great London is, sometimes you find yourself needing a change of scenery. London is surrounded by towns and cities which are full of history, culture and attractive scenery. Narrowing down a day trip choice is hard, so I went on a quest. These are my top choices and I keep going to them time and time again. They are all easy to get to by public transport, so you don't need to drive to any of them. Starting in Oxford, home to the oldest university in the English speaking world, only to the University of Bologna and the University of Paris, which are older. One of the best things about Oxford is that you can do it all by foot. You can see everything from the most famous colleges to historic pubs, to many of the free museums. See the science of where great works of literature were born in Oxford like Alice in Wonderland, The Lord of the Rings and The Chronicles of Narnia. You can see Alice in Wonderland figures in the marketplace or see the inspiration of the door of Narnia and grab a drink in the famous Eagle and Child notorious for being the meeting place of informal literary group the Inklings, including Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. I definitely recommend doing a walking tour from an Oxford University student. Not only will it give you the bearings, but the unique history, and also some of the traditions from the universities, from the students themselves. They give you unique insights to everything about Oxford. If you don't have a college in mind, then I would highly recommend visiting Christchurch. It is the largest, grandest, and most impressive. The dining hall is also famous as the Harry Potter dining hall. So it's a must for all fans. This has been on my list to do for ages and I still have not done it. Bodlin Library is one of the oldest libraries in Europe. It's one of the three libraries in the UK and Ireland that receives a copy of every book that is published here. They even have a warehouse outside of Oxford with a conveyor belt that sends books into the library so you know their collection is extensive. Cheap views can be found at the top of Carfax Tower, Oxford Castle or the University of Church and St Mary the Virgin in Radcliffe Square. And this is where I went for views of Oxford. You can see sweeping views of all of the places so it's worth a few pounds to go up. A visit to Oxford wouldn't be complete without a visit to one of the many historic pubs. My personal favourite is the Turf Tavern. It's also where former Australian Prime Minister Bob Hogg broke the Guinness World Record for downing a yard glass of beer in 11 seconds. Legend. Cambridge, the other famous university city in England, which happens to have a big rivalry with Oxford. The university didn't start until 1209 when scholars from Oxford migrated to Cambridge to escape the Oxford riots of town and gown. Basically it was townspeople versus the scholars, so I guess this is where the rivalry started between the two university cities. The city has some of the most amazing architecture and prestigious colleges like King's College, Trinity College and St. John's College. Punting is famous in the city. It is a flat bottom boat which is used for leisure time and pushed across the water using a quaint pole. To this day I have never been punting but I do love to watch people who try and learn. This is mainly because they have no clue and they run into walls or other boats and annoy the locals. If you are not game to learn to punt yourself there are plenty of punting tours. Just don't believe everything the guide has to say as they like to make up some facts. Next to Mills Pub, you will not only be able to watch people punting, but you can hang out with the local cows. They are iconic to Cambridge. It started when locals were allowed to use public spaces to graze livestock, and nowadays they are well loved by many residents. So yeah, you can just go chill with the cows, have a drink, have a picnic, and watch them walk by. Stop into the Eagle for a DNA beer. It's a cast beer, so it might not be to everyone's taste. It became the place where Francis Kirk interrupted patrons at lunchtime on the 28th of February, 1953, 
to announce that he and James Watson had discovered the secret of life, which was the structure of DNA. Wondering how they discovered DNA at lunch? Well, that was due to the help of Rosalind Franklin. They were looking at some x-rays she sent across when they discovered it. Her contributions to the discovery of the structure of DNA were largely unrecognized during her life. After protest in Cambridge in 2010, Rosalind's name was finally added to the DNA statue, so you can go see that while you're there. There are a few things more quintessentially English than a day trip to the seaside. There is no shortage of famous beaches and seafronts through England, and some of the most spectacular ones are like Devon and Cornwall, but they are all too far away for a day trip. Do be prepared for Brighton's Pebble Beach, but there is a lot more to do than simply heading to the beach. Brighton is a big foodie heaven, and full disclosure, this is the main reason why I go there. The city is also regularly voted one of the most vegan friendly cities in the UK and even the world. There's also like a fish and chip shop that's just opened that I wanna go try that is all fully vegan. Of course, there is so much more to do in Brighton than just the food. It is really a great city to wander around. Be sure to spend a good chunk of time exploring Brighton's Palace Pier. It's the biggest attraction in the southeast of England. A grade two listed pleasure pier is about as typically English as you can get and offers truly authentic experiences in terms of what it has to offer from the rides and the amusements to the typical eats and drinks that you would expect from an old fashioned fair. One of my favorite things to do is play the two penny machines. So make sure you have some pennies and then you can play the little slots and see if you can win some of them back. One of the things I recommend not doing though is trying to take a photo of the pier and holding up a donut. The seagulls are rather aggressive and you know, they are one of the most dangerous animals here and they may steal your food like they did to me in this video. <laughs> Windsor Castle the actual home of Her Majesty the Queen. She doesn't actually live in London, she lives here. The Thousand Year Old Palace offers both a staggering amount of history and tradition as a real sense of the day-to-day -day life of Britain's modern working royal family. Like Buckingham Palace, there is a changing of the guard ceremony at Windsor Castle. Make sure that you choose a day that is actually happening and know what happened to me in the Lonely Planet video where I totally missed the changing of the guard. Do allow at least two and a half to three hours to visit Windsor Castle. It is the oldest occupied castle in the world and it has a lot to see. There is the magnificent state apartment, Queen Mary's doll's house, the castle grounds and St. George's Chapel. Not only did the chapel serve as Harry and Meghan's wedding venue, 10 British monarchs are buried here, including King Henry VIII. The long walk connects Windsor Castle with Snow Hill in Windsor Great Park, and is still used by royal carriages every year to get to Ascot races. From the castle gate to the Copper Horse, it's around 2.7 miles there, so do be mindful of time because you're expecting a six mile round trip and I've still never done it to this day because it's a long walk. I personally like walking around the river during the summer. It's perfect to set up a picnic, watch the swans and see people boating. Rye with Camber. Rye is probably best known for its cobbled lanes and crooked half timber houses situated between rolling hills and the English Channel. It's not a typical seaside town as it's situated a little inland with far reaching views of the harbour, the nature reserve and out to sea over Camber Sands. Just down the road from Rye is Rye Harbour and Camber Sands. In Camber Sands you can stroll along the beach, watch the kite surfers, enjoy the views out to sea, but there are boat rides for both speed and seal spotting. The two locations combine well together the medieval history of Rye and the fun filled seaside of Camber. For history lovers, there is the charm of Mermaid Street, the Mermaid Inn, and the Ypres Tower. For nature lovers, there is windswept nature reserves and the miles and miles of beaches to comb through, and even some sand dunes to explore in Camber. 
But don't expect the usual seaside attractions of arcades and amusements. A visit to Ryan Camber is a different type of seaside experience. Mount Vineyard. When you think of wine regions, England is not the first place that comes to mind. There are quite a few wineries in Kent and it's a great starting point to get your taste for English wine. As it's accessible by train, there is no excuse not to do the wine and cheese tasting. Making your way through five wines and some cheese is not a bad way to spend the day. And during the summer, they'll have DJs playing in the vineyards so you can sit and enjoy the sun with some music with a lovely glass of wine. These staff members are so welcoming. They will walk you through English wine making in Kent about English winemakers in the area and the general history of how winemaking started here. After finishing up, you can visit Shoreham, which is a quintessential British village. It's perfect for a leisurely stroll after the wine tasting and pop into one of their four pubs. Many people will know Arundel for two famous landmarks, Arundel Castle and Arundel Cathedral. They are very impressive. You can see them from the train station as they dominate the skyline. The 11th century castle has been home to the Duke of Norfolk for centuries. This is easily a day trip in itself. By the late 1800s, the house had been almost completely rebuilt in the magnificent Gothic style, one of the greatest architectural triumphs of the Victorian England. After Windsor Castle, I am told it is the second largest inhabited proper castle in the land. I'm not sure how true that is. In the town centre, there are independent retailers, antique markets and art galleries, and a host of great places to eat and drink. There are endless places I could recommend visiting outside of London, and I plan on doing some of my hidden gems in a future video. Mount Vineyard is definitely one of those, and I have a whole video on what to do in Mount Vineyard and Shoreham.